Good evening, uh, friends. It's good for us to uh, return to God's Word. And uh, tonight we're going to finish uh, the story of Abraham. Now, uh, uh, if you turn in your Bibles to uh, Genesis 25, you will see how uh, we uh, briefly have a beautiful uh, description of Abraham's end of his life. Uh, we read in, in this one, Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Median, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan fathered Seba and Dadan. And the sons of Dadan were Ashuram, Lethusim, and Leuman. The sons of Midian were Ephra, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Alda. All these were the children of Keturah. Abraham gave all he had to Isaac, but to the sons of his concubines, Abraham gave gifts. And while he was still living, he sent them away from his son Isaac eastward to the east country. Now, might be a strange passage and it might seem a little heartless of Abraham. And yet it's an act of faith because Abraham is here showing that he has fully surrendered himself to embracing God's word. God's word that promised that Isaac is the son of the promise and Isaac is the one through whom all that God has promised Abraham will continue the seed of the woman that is to crush the head of Satan, the seed of the woman whom Abraham will be blessed with, Abraham who will become a blessing to the nations, Abraham to whom God had promised this land. All of these promises are going to be fulfilled through Isaac. He is the son of the promise. And now Abraham shows that he's fully embraced God's promise and he has no backup plan. He doesn't look to divide the inheritance between his sons so that if something were to happen to Isaac, God could do it a different way. God has already declared Isaac is the son of the promise. And Abraham believed. And so now he gives generously to his sons, but he sends them away from Isaac because Isaac and Isaac alone is the son of the promise. He is the one through whom God will bring salvation to all the nations. And yet we see God's faithfulness to Abraham in all of these children that are born we read on in verse 7. These are the days of the years of Abraham's life, 175 years. Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age. An old man and full of years and was gathered to his people. In chapter 15, God, as he uh, addresses Abraham, uh, promise that he would uh, go to his fathers in peace and he would be buried in a good old age. In Genesis 15, 15. And now God has fulfilled his promise. God has been faithful. Abraham has lived a hundred years after God called him. And at that point, he was without children. And now at a good old age, he dies and he has plenty of children and especially the son of the promise, Isaac. And we see that Isaac and Ishmael now put their differences aside and they come and they bury their father in the grave that points that they lay a hold of God's promise. Abraham died only having seen, as it were, at a distance, God's fulfillment. 
He doesn't have children, as many as the sand of the seashores. He sees Isaac, he sees these other children, but they are but a few. He has not yet seen the fulfillment of God giving the promised land to his descendants, but already he claims it in his burial in the promised land. And we read in verse 9, Isaac and Ishmael, the sons, his sons, buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, east of Mamre, the field that Abraham purchased from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with Sarah, his wife. After the death of Abraham, God blessed Isaac, his son, and Isaac settled and bare Laharoi. The emphasis on this piece of land is so clear, isn't it? All the repetition we have here. He's buried in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephraim, the son of Zohar, the Hittite east of Mamre, the field that Abraham purchased from the Hittites. And then we are told he was buried with Sarah, his wife. Why all this repetition? Because God is making clear that he is uh, uh, um, in Abraham laying claim to this promised land. Abraham is clinging to God even in death because this land, even though they only own this burial site, is now a testimony for all Israel that God's going to bring them and they will possess this land as a gift inheritance from the Lord. Now it's important that we see that even though Abraham dies, God's story continues because God has not yet bring about all that he is going to do. And so we read of the torch, the promise of God's faithful work continuing now through Isaac. God blessed Isaac, his son. And Isaac settled in Ber Laharoi. Through Isaac now, the promise God gave to Abraham is going to continue. The blessing to the nations that God has made Abraham is continuing in Isaac, who now becomes a blessing to the nations. And he takes up residence right there at that, uh, uh, um, that well uh, with which God uh, blessed and saved his brother Ishmael right next to that well that we read about in chapter 16, Isaac will dwell. And God's going to work now through Isaac to fulfill his promise. And it's going to lead ultimately to Christ. And yet, as we are told that Isaac is the son of promise, the word of God steps back and gives us the whole line of Ishmael, Abraham's son. And we know this is not the line of the promise. Actually, this line would be in opposition to the line of faith. Ishmael would become an enemy of God's people, of Isaac himself. And yet, we're told of all these children born to him. Why? Because God has promised Abraham that even though he has chosen Isaac, he will also bless Ishmael with 12 sons so that he may be a mighty nation. God's grace to Abraham is extended to both his sons. Even though Isaac is the son of the promise, Ishmael, because 
he belongs to Abraham, is also blessed. And so we read, these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's servant, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael, named in order of their birth, Neboioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, and Kedar, Abdil, Bibsham, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadat, Tema, Jether, Nafish, and Kedemah. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names, by the villages and by their encampments, twelve princes according to their tribes. These are the years of the life of Ishmael, a hundred and thirty-seven years. He breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people. They settled from Havilah to Sur, which is opposite Egypt in the direction of Syria. He settled over against his kinsmen. God has been faithful to Abraham. He has fulfilled his word even to Isaac. God never backtracks on any of his promises. And Abraham and Abraham's descendants are blessed. But now the focus is going to fall on Isaac through whom God takes this promise further. But Isaac is but one step along the way to the Lord Jesus Christ. All these early patriarchs die without seeing the glorious promises of God fulfilled fully. But it all points to the reality that all of us live in this world as pilgrims. We are not yet home, but our home is coming. And it will be when our Saviour Jesus Christ returns. And even in death, we declare that we hope of a better tomorrow. Even in death, faith, who clings to Christ, says, I believe in the resurrection of the dead. And when Christ comes, all who are dead will be made alive and we will together meet the Lord in the air. And then faith will be no more because faith will turn to sight. And as the words of Revelation tell us, no longer will be uh, there anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, in the city, the new Jerusalem. And his servants will worship him and they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. A night and day will be no more. They will need no light of lamb or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. That's our future. As uh, the great Church Father St. Augustine said, then we shall see, uh, we shall rest and see, see and love, love and praise. And then will be the end the end that never ends. What a beautiful place awaits us in the presence of God. Uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the hope that you hold out for us here in your servant Abraham and his faith. We long for that day when you will make all things new and we will never have to fear death itself because he would, uh, death would be destroyed. As we await this return of Christ, give your people now the faith to cling to you and to hold fast to all your promises. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and your family. Bye-bye.